This week, we moved down the Guadalupe coastline to Pigeon Cove, where we hike the shoreline, chase some fish, visit a chocolate farm, swim in a waterfall, dive a marine reserve, test a bridge for structural integrity, and then hike to the top of this. It was a very busy week. Cause even in the madness, there is peace, drowning out the voices all around. After spending about a week near De Hay in Guadalupe, we decided to move down the coast to Pigeon Cove to dig into the Cousteau Reserve as well as some land excursions. All right, I'm just documenting us removing William from the family because he's 18. <laughs> you get ready? Remove Will from the family. Stop it. <laughs> You're mad that I have long arms. You, your arms are not long. We didn't really remove William from the family yet, but he is on his last couple of months on the boat, so I gotta keep him on his toes. I saw him fly up here. Yeah, what are you doing? Get out of here, punk. The big draw here is the Cousteau Reserve that includes Pigeon Island, but Bouillon and the surrounding area is a popular tourist spot, so there's easy access to lots of land-based activities as well. Our first order of business was booking a guided volcano hike. These things fill up fast. And then we talked with the wonderful people at the tourist office and they arranged a rental car for us. There's definitely a language barrier on Guadeloupe and our French is pretty weak. So we needed all the help we could get. We decided since we were already in town, we should take a coastal hike to see some of the views of the Anchorage and Pigeon Island. So this hike just wanders along the coastline and we'll be able to look out at the Pigeon Islands. I like the other trail, it went to a pool. <laughs> a swimming pool? <laughs> yeah, condos of a swimming pool. Older again? Yeah. Pretty cool. It's hidden behind that monohole there. I can see the little boat that's close to us. <laughs> I'm guessing that's because it's super close to the cliff. <laughs> wow. So this trail has a lot of ups and downs with lookouts off of different points like that with danger signs. Um, it's great on a day like this where it's sunny and dry, but I would imagine if it was wet, this would be really difficult to go up and down on. You can see it's pretty steep. Anyway, good hike so far. They're next to each other, about five feet underwater. Okay, now you can see all the paddle boarders. Wow. Oh yeah, that's, oh, that's, that's a more big what it looks chain like. of them. Uh, uh, kayakers. Oh yeah, that's exactly what it was. Wow. A boating hazard. Yeah. Just kidding. That is crazy yeah, how it looks, you standing right there. snorkeling right there. You can go down there and see over the low. What? No, this is a top-down view. <laughs> There were uh... So important point, as you're walking past the beach towards the trailhead, the actual trail does not look like the actual trail. That is not the trail. Look for orange markers. You're gonna go through these trees. It's weird that it's marked that way, but that's the way it is. So that was the whole trail. What a, what a great hike. It was beautiful, some great views of the bay of pigeon islands and uh i'd recommend it come when it's dry if it was wet it would be difficult and slippery and unpleasant so if it's a dry day come do it it's an easy hike the 
Cousteau Reserve is a protected underwater reserve and the sea life around Pigeon Island is incredible. Now that we're in the water so much, I'm going to try and narrow down these videos to the fish and creatures we haven't seen before, like these guys. These are called black triggerfish. and sponges here are amazing. While I was swimming, I came upon the school of light blue tangs, so I decided to follow them. And all at once, they descended on the coral to feed. It was mesmerizing. I could have watched this for hours. So this morning I went in and rented a car. We rented it for four days so we can go and explore some of the things on land that we can't get to from the shore. Uh, today we're going to go to a chocolate farm and then we're going to go into the national park and see if we can't catch a waterfall or two, maybe even go swimming. Full day, uh, it should be interesting. It's a stick shift minivan, which I've never driven before. I know how to drive stick, just kind of weird in a minivan. Anyway, uh, we're gonna head out here in the next hour or so and grab, grab Seascape and go explore the island. Coco House has pretty extensive gardens, so we walked around for a while before our Coco lesson. The lesson was very informative and walked us through how this place came to be and how we get from cocoa beans to chocolate and cocoa butter. We also got to taste a lot of stuff. Afterwards, we headed into the National Park the park makes up 10% of the land area of Guadalupe and covers over 40,000 acres. It's massive. We decided to check out a popular waterfall. photograph but she was in there a long time so Shane decided to go in with her and she soon got out waterfall. Uh, we just saw it on the map and decided to come. There's a bunch of people here but it's Saturday and it's not like we're at Disney World or anything. There's plenty of room, tons of people but super fun. Water is so refreshing you can get right in the waterfall and it's an easy walk from the parking lot so if, if you want an easy thing to go do and you have a car definitely come to this waterfall. I'm not gonna pronounce it because I'm gonna butcher it but definitely worth the trip and uh, super fun. Bring a bathing suit, bring a towel. It's about all you need. So we're here at Pigeon Island and we're gonna go diving today, but not with traditional scuba gear. Shane and I are gonna be using tankless diving systems they're called Nomad, and they're created by a company called Blue. 
You might have seen this before. I used it mainly for cleaning underneath the bottom of our boat, but we've started diving with it and it is pretty fantastic what you can do with these things. We can go about 30 feet down. Each battery lasts 30 to 45 minutes and I've got two of them. So you can get a lot of diving in without all of the gear needed to dive bigger and deeper depths. This is perfect for what I like to do, which is, you know, 30 feet going down a little deeper and seeing some of the cooler stuff that exists underneath the rocks. Diving with the Nomad is a pretty big change from snorkeling. I can suddenly go deeper and stay down to see more things. It's pretty wild looking back up at the surface. It seems a lot deeper than 30 feet. And like I was hoping, we spotted a lot of neat fish. So one very important thing to remember is that this is diving, and all the regular diving precautions and procedures need to be followed. Don't hold your breath, don't dive alone, ascend slowly, relax, but then enjoy it because there's a lot to see down there. All right, so that was the uh, dive around the north side of Pigeon Island using the, the tankless, what's it called, tankless? Tankless dive system. Uh, using the tankless dive system from Blue. Uh, it performed really well. I think we were out there maybe 30 minutes, something like that, and uh, just a blast. We were down there, we saw some other divers and uh, yeah, right down there with them. Saw some fish I haven't seen here before, which was pretty neat. But yeah, this thing is way cooler doing this than cleaning the bottom of the boat. So I think I'll do more of this and less, less bottom cleaning. <laughs> that was some parallel parking. We had two hikes in front of us. This was the first one called House of the Forest Trail. They don't want one because they put it back in their pickup truck. As you walk into it, the rainforest just makes everything quiet. <laughs> I understand you're trying to use all this stuff. All right, House of the Forest Trail. Really easy hike. You could probably do it in flip flops. Um, very flat, well maintained trail, easy to find. Parking, there are two parking areas. You just got to kind of look for it. And uh, the entrance is right by the, there's kind of a house at the lower parking area uh, and the trail entrance is right there. So if you're looking for a really easy mile and a half, maybe trail, House of the Forest is probably a good one to go try out. The second hike of the day was climbing this hill called Memel de Pigeon, which means pigeon utter. The first part was a lot of steps but the steps gave way quickly to a muddy mess.
Now the online reviews said the top was overgrown and you can't see anything. That was wrong. There's a viewing platform with a 360 degree view. Oh, wow. This hike was a little tough, but well worth the effort to see that view. And the hike down was a lot easier. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and tune in next week as we continue our adventures on Guadalupe. We even hike to the edge of a volcano and make it back in one piece. Thanks again for watching. Follow us on Instagram for daily updates. We'll see you next week.